Now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days bring in another moon, but oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night, four nights will quickly dream away the time, and then the moon like to a silver bow, new bent in heaven, to behold the night of our solemnities. Go, Philistrata, stir up the Athenian youth to merriment. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword, and won thy love, doing thee injury. But I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with reveling. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? For the vexation come I with complaint against my child, my daughter, Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius, my noble lord. This man hath my permission to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander, and my gracious duke. This man has bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou have given her rhymes and exchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sung with feigning voice verses of feigning love and stolen the impression of a fantasy with bracelets of thy hair, rings, gauds, conceits, knacks, trifles, nosegays, sweetmeats, messengers of strong vermin and unhardened youth, and my gracious lord, be it so, she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to a death according to our law immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. To you, your father should be as a god. 
Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself he is. But in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father looked but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must with his judgment look. I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, on that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or wed Demetrius as he would. Oh, relent, sweet Hermia! And Lysander, yield that crazy title to my certain right! You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? <laughs> Scornful Lysander, true he hath my love. And what is mine, my love will render to him. And she is mine, and all my right of her, I do estate to Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his. <laughs> my fortunes every way is fairly ranked, if not with vantage, as with Demetrius. And which is all more than these boasts can be. I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should I not then prosecute my right? I must confess that I have thought so much and with Demetrius intended to speak thereof. But Demetrius, come, and come, Aegeus. You shall go with me. I, I have some private schooling for you both, for you. Fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up to death or to a vowed single life. Come, my Hippolyta, what cheer, my love. Demetrius and the dear, go along. I must employ you in some business against our nuptials and confer with you of something nearly that concerns yourself. With duty and desire, we follow you. How now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? Perchance the roses there do fade so fast. They like for want of rain, which I could well beteem them from the tempest of my eyes. <laughs> Ay, me, for aught that I could have ever read or hear by tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth. Oh, hell! Choose love by another's eyes! Hear me, hear me. I have a widow on, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues, and she thinks of me as her only son. There, Gentle Hermia, may I marry thee? <laughs> <laughs> and to that place, the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, a league without the town, there I will stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee, like Cupid's strongest foe by his best arrow with the golden way, in that same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I <coughs> <laughs> Keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. Godspeed, fair Helena! Wither away! Call you me fair? That fair again, unsay. Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair! Oh, that for favor so, your foot I catch, fair Hermia, ere I go. My ears should catch your voice. My eye, your eye, my tongue should catch your tongue's sweet melody. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns could teach my smiles such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty, 
Would that fault were mine. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. <laughs> In the wood where often you and I upon faint primrose beds were wont to lie. There my Lysander and myself shall meet. And thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Helena, adieu. And as you dote on him, Demetrius dote on you. <laughs> How happy some or other some can be! Through Athens I am thought as fair as she. Ugh, but what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eyne, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. And when this pale some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved, <laughs> and showers of oaths did melt. Tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But here in me nigh to enrich my pain, to have the sight thither and back again. Is all our company here? Uh, you are best to call them generally man by man, according to the script. <laughs> here is a script for each person in Athens thought fit to play in our interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. Uh, first, Peter Quince, say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors. Mary. Our play is the most lamentable comedy, the most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a merry. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves. Answer when I call you. Nick Bottom the Weaver. Ready. Name one part I'm for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. That will ask some tears in the true performing of it. <laughs> if I do it, let the audience look through their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measure. To the rest. No. Yet, my chief humor is for a tyrant. I could play Ercles rarely, or a part to tear a cat in, to make all split. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates. And famous car shall shine from far and make and mar the foolish fates. Bravo. <laughs> this was locked. Now, name the rest of the players. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Oh. Here, Peter Grinch. Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. Oh, what is Thisbe? A wandering knight. <laughs> <laughs> it is the lady that Pyramus must love. Nay, faith, let me not play a woman. For never fear coming. That is all one. You may play it in a mask and speak as small as you will. Ah, and I may hide my face. Let me play Thisbe too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thisney, Thisney. Oh, Pyramus, love it all. My face, my dear lady. No! You must play Pyramus and flute, you piss me. Well, proceed. Robert Starling, the tailor. Here, Peter Quince. You, Robert Starling, must play Disby's mother. Tom Stout, the tinker. Here, Peter Quince. You, Pyramus's father, myself, Disby's father, Mrs. Snug, the joiner. 
Uh, you the lion's part. And I hope here is a play well fitted. Have you the lion's part written? Pray you, if it be given me, for I am slow of study. Well, you may do it extempo, for it is it is nothing but roar. Ah, uh, let me play the lion, too. <laughs> I will roar that ever make the duke say, let him roar again, let him roar again. Yes, and you should do it too terribly, and frighten the duchess and ladies enough that they would shriek. And that were enough to hang us all. That would hang us every mother's son. I will mm. aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove I will roar you into or any nightingale. You can play no perfect Pyramus! <laughs> <laughs> For Pyramus is a, a gentleman, a, a, a sweet-faced man, a, a proper man as one shall see in a summer's day, a lovely gentleman-like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyrrhus. Well, I will undertake it. Uh, <laughs> masters, I am to entreat you, request you, desire you to con your parts by tomorrow evening and meet me in the palace woods a mile without town. There, by moonlight, we shall rehearse. For if we meet in the city, we will be dogged by company and our devices known. In the meantime, I will draw up a bill of property such as I'll play once. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. <laughs> Take pain. Adieu. At the Duke's Oak, we meet. Wanton, am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. Why should Titania cross her overarm? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. <laughs> Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order, and in the spiced Indian air by night, full often has she gossiped by my side, and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands. She, being mortal of that boy, did die. For her sake do I wear up her boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Thesis' wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight brothers go with us, if not, shun me, and I will 
spare thy horse. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies, away. We shall chide downright if longer I stay. Go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle Puck, come hither. Fetch me that flower, the herb I shewed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make or man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. <laughs> Fetch me this herb, and be thou here again ere the leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girdle round about the earth in forty minutes. Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania when she is asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing then she waking looks upon, be it on lion or bear or wolf or bull, on meddling monkey or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. <laughs> <laughs> and, ere I take this charm from off her sight, as I can take it with another herb, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible and will overhear their conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? The one I'll slay, the other slayeth me. <laughs> Thou told'st me they were stolen to this wood. <laughs> Dance! Get thee gone! Follow me no more. You draw me, you hard, hard with adamant. But did you draw that iron? For my heart is as true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I have, shall have no power to follow thee. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you? And even for that do I love you the more. Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit. For I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. <laughs> to impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one who loves you not. I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. The wildest half not such a heart as you. Go where you will, the story shall be changed. Apollo flies and Daphne holds the chase. I will not stay thy questions. Let me go. Or if thou follow me, do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief in the wood. Oh, I'll follow thee and make a heaven out of hell. To die upon the head of the <laughs> Flower there, welcome wanderer. Aye, there it is. I pray thee, give it me. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where oxlips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses, and with eglantine. There sleeps Titania sometime of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delights, and there the snake throws her enameled skin. Weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. <laughs> and with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. Affect it with some care. 
that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And look out, meet me ere the first cock crow! Fear not, my lord, your servant shall be so! A roundel and a fairy song, but then for a third part of a minute hence, some to kill cankers in the musk-rose buds, some war with rare mice for their leathern wings to make my small elves coats, some keep back the clamorous owl that nightly hoots and wonders at our quaint spirits. Now asleep, and then to your offices, and let me rest. Spotted snakes with seest when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take, love and languish for his sake, be it ounce or cat or bear, card or boar with bristled hair, in thy eye that shall appear, and it is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near. Got our way. <laughs> we'll, we'll rest. Hurry, <laughs> if you think 
it good and tarry for the comfort of the day? Be it so, Lysander. Find you out of bed, for I upon this wood will rest my head. One turf shall serve as pillow for us both. One heart, one bed, two bosoms, one trope. Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, lie further off yet. Do not lie so near. <coughs> oh, take the sense, sweet, of my innocence. Gentle friend, for love and courtesy, lie further off. <laughs> <laughs> so far be distant. Good night, sweet friend. Thy love ne'er alter till thy sweet life end. Amen. Amen to that fair prayer, say I. And thus end life when I end loyalty. <laughs> Here is my bed. Sleep, give thee all his rest. And run through fire, I will, for thy sweet sake, oh, transparent Helena. Nature shows art that through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword. Say not so, Lysander, say not so. What though he love your Hermia? Lord, what though? Yet Hermia still loves you. Then be content. Content with Hermia? <laughs> no. <laughs> I do repent the tedious moments I with her have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who would not change a raven for a dove? <laughs> Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve this scorn? Is not enough? It's not enough, young man, that I can never, nor never can deserve a sweet look from Demetrius' eyes, but you must throughout my insufficiency. But fare you well, perforce I must confess, I thought your lord of much more gentleness. Oh, that a lady of one man refused should of another therefore be abused. She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleepest thou there? 
and never mayest thou, Lysander, come near. Now all my powers address your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. <laughs> you are not nigh. Either death or you I'll find immediately. Are we all met? Oh, Pat, Pat, he is a marvelous convenient place for our rehearsal. This green plot shall be our stage. This Hawthorne break our tiring house, and we will do it in action as we will do it before the Duke. Pinocrates! What sayest thou, Bully Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Fisbee that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself. Which the ladies cannot abide. Now answer you that. He has to kill himself. By, by Larkin, a parlous fear. I believe we must leave the killing out when uh, all is done. Not a whit. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue. And let the prologue seem to say we will do no harm with our swords, and the Pyramus is not killed indeed. Oh, no. I'm... And, for more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver. This will put them out of fear. <laughs> Well, then we will have such a prologue, and it shall be written in 8 and 6. Uh, no, it's two more that will be written in 8 and 8. Uh, will not the ladies be afeard of a lion? Ooh. I fear it. I promise you, master. You ought to consider with yourselves to bring in, God shield us, a lion among ladies is a most dreadful thing. For there is not a more fearful wildfowl than your lion living, and we ought to look to it. Another prologue must be written to tell that she is not a lion. <laughs> Nay, you must name her name, and have her face must be seen through the lion's neck, and she herself must speak through, saying thus, or to the same defect, uh, ladies, or fair ladies, I would wish you, or... I would request you, or uh, ah, I would entreat you not to fear, not to tremble, my life for yours. If you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a woman as you fellow women are. And there indeed let her name her name, and tell them plainly she is Mrs. Snug, the joiner. Mm, that may be so, but there is two hard things there is, and that is to bring moonlight into the chamber for her. As you know, Thisbe and Pyramus meet by moonlight. Uh, doth the moon shine the night we play our play? A calendar. A calendar. Uh, look at the almanac. Find out moonshine. Find out moonshine. Yes, it doth shine that night. Why, then you mean leave a casement of the great chamber window where we play, open, and the moon is shining at the casement. But then there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber. For Pyramus and Thisbe, so says the story, to talk through a chink of a wall. Uh, you can never bring in a wall, Bottom. What do you say? <laughs> Some man or other must present wall. And let him hold his fingers thus, 
and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. <laughs> if that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, every mother, son, and rehearse your parts. <laughs> Pyramus, you begin. When you have spoken your speech, enter into that break, and so everyone else according to his cue. Swaggering near. So near the cradle of the fairy queen? What? A play to war! I'll be an auditor, an actor too, perhaps, if I see cause. Uh, speak, Pyramus, this we stand for. This be the flowers of Odia, savor sweet. Odors, odors! Odors, savor sweet. <laughs> so hath thy breath, my dearest, this be dear. But talk, a voice! Stay not but here a while, and by and by I will to the appear. A stranger pyramus than e'er play here. Must I speak now? <laughs> no, you must, for you must understand. He goes but to hear a noise that he heard, and is to come again. Most radiant pyramus, most lily white of hue, of color, like the red rose of triumphant briar. I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at Ninny's tomb. Ninny's tomb? <laughs> Why, you, you must not say that yet, that you speak to Pyramus. You, you speak all your parts at once, cues and all. <laughs> uh, true as true as false, that yet will never tire. Speak, Pyramus, your cue is past. <laughs> if I were there, ah! this be I would only die. Oh, 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 <laughs> Why did they run away? This is a knavery of them to make me afeard. I will walk up and down here, and I will sing that they shall hear I am not afraid. The usul cocks a black of you with orange tawny bill. The throstle with is not so true, the wren with little quill. What? Angel wakes me <laughs> from my flowery bed. The finch, the sparrow, and the lark, the plain song cuckoo grey, whose noteful man near man doth mark and dares not dance a nay. I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamoured of thy note, so is mine eye enthralled to thy shape, and thy fair virtue's force <laughs> perforce doth move me on the first view to say, to swear, I love thee. <laughs> uh, methinks, mistress, uh, you should have little reason for that. And yet, to say the truth, uh, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. Oh, thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. <laughs> Not so, neither. Uh, but if I had wit enough to get out of this wood, I have enough to serve my own turn. Out! Of this wood, do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state. And I do love thee, therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, and they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep. And sing while thou on pressed flowers dost sleep. And I'll purge thy mortal grossness so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. Peace blossom, cobweb, moth, mustard seed. Be kind and kind.
courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries, with purple grapes, green figs and mulberries. The honey bags steal from the humble bees and pluck the wings from painted butterflies to fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. Nod to him, elves, and do him courtesy. Hail, mortal! Hail, hail, hail! I'd cry, your worship's mercy, heartily. Come, wait upon him. Lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye. And when she weeps, weeps every little flower, lamenting some enforced chastity. <laughs> <laughs> Tie up my love's tongue and bring him silently. <laughs> I wonder if Titania be awaked. Then, what it was that next came in her eye, which she must dote on in extremity. Here is my messenger. How now, mad spirit? My mistress for the monsters in love! <laughs> <laughs> Knit her close and consecrated bower. While she was in her dull and sleeping hour, a crew of patches, rude mechanicals. Bum bum bum, ba dum bum bum, ba dum bum 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 bum. <laughs> were met together to rehearse a play oh. intended for Great Theseus' nuptial day. <laughs> the show was the thick skin of that barren sort, who Pyramus presented in their sport, forsook his scene and entered in a break. When I did him at this adventure to take, an ass's knoll, I fix it on his head! <laughs> <laughs> Anon his thisby must be answering. And forth then the it comes, when they him spy, seven themselves in northeast with the skies! <laughs> I led them on in this distracted fear, unless we pyramids translated there. <laughs> Within that moment, so it came to pass, Tanya waked and straightway loved, and now! <laughs> this falls out better than I could devise! <laughs> but <laughs> hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice, as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping that is finished too, and the Athenian woman by his side. That when he waked, a force he must be eyed. Stand close, this is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. Why rebuke you him that loves you so? Lay breath so bitter on your bitter foe. I'm a child, but I should use thee worse. For thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being or choosing blood, Plunge in the deep and kill me too. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood. Was he dead? For what that I can tell. I pray thee tell me then that he is well. Oh, and if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege never to see me more. And from thy hated presence part I so see me no more. Whether he be dead or no. Well, there is no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while, I shall remain. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite and laid the love juice on some true love's sight. About the wood go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens look thou find. By some illusion see thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than air from the church's bone. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid.